Good evening, YouTube. Austin Trench coming at you with another Transformers review. Today I have the Siege War for Cybertron trilogy, Optimus Prime. This comes from the new Takar Tomy line of the same name. On the front here, you can see Optimus Prime and all his glory, yada yada. You can see some really cool box art. Hold on, let me get it right there in the frame. Yeah, and you can see that right there. I do like how uh, the box art shows the arc right here, as well as all the classic heroes and villains of this war, which I might get, which might be uh, Star. Starscream, Megatron, Soundwave. They haven't really come out with any Autobots I like, but eh, whatever. On the back, you can see Optimus Prime holding his weapon and a new weapon, by the way, which this comes with some sort of Battle Masters thing, which are tiny robots that turn into weapons rather than just vehicles. You can see his Cybertronian mode right here, which I'm not a fan of, but whatever. It, you know, this figure's only biding me time until a very special one comes out. But yeah, that's all I pretty much have to say about all this. You know, I really would just rather get him out of the box and just show you why I think this figure is absolutely cool. All right, out of the packaging, Optimus Prime looks absolutely fantastic. You can see a lot of effort was done by Takara and Hasbro to create a very memorable figure. This is on par with stuff you usually see in like the collector's or masterpiece edition of action figures relating to the character. Now I do warn you there is some backpacking, but it's barely noticeable. Uh, you can see that there is some arm issues right here, but again, most of these are barely noticeable from the front. And you know, as it is as a war figure on an alien planet, it does match a lot of the things we know from Optimus Prime. Now, in terms of posability, you can actually move the legs right here, 360, and you can move it up and down. You can't move the feet unless you're transforming them, but you know, that's a, that's a slight little disappointment, but whatever. Uh, yeah, right here you got hip joints right here, and the waist can move 360 as well. Just be careful with the backpack. Uh, the arms right here can move up and down. So can the hands, by the way. That's nice. And now, here's something I want you to notice. Uh, whenever you pose the figure, these actually lift up. So you can actually have them, you know, doing their own thing right there without it just like eh, 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 and all like that. But, you know, that's a really good design thing I wish Hasbro would put, you know, put into their next type of figure line. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. As you know, it has a ball joint right here where you can just, like, move Optimus Prime's head up and down. But I warn you, it does bring up this a little bit on the hatch. But, yeah, you know, like, I'm glad they got the posability right. And, you know, it really makes the figure all the more special. Up close, you can see Optimus Prime's paint details are phenomenal. And real quick before I continue on with this review, yes, I have removed the paint decals from his shoulder as well as the war marks all over his body. I'm sorry, I don't like that on my figures. If you do, that's fine. That's just not for me. Other than that, I'm not going to hold that to the figure. This figure is still awesome with or without them. As you can see, they really did a number on his face. They got all the painting details right. They got right here. Uh, it is missing some paint, and that's not because I removed the other markings from it, such as on his arms. He's missing the yellow for the triangles and the lines up there, but that could be fixed with stickers or something. I don't know. Uh, everything else is very well proportioned and colors, and yes, I did use a sticker for the insignia right here, which actually looks a lot better in my opinion, but hey, if you like the silver one, that's for you. Um, another thing I like right here is the detail within the body itself. It does feel like the classic animated figure look but just in like a, a modern IDW comic point of view. They did do some really good jobs with how it looks uh, with its transformation parts right here where some of it can barely be seen such as the wheels in his, uh, you know, his abdomen. Everything else is really great. The only problem I do have with the figure in general is the eyes. I feel like the eyes don't stand out enough in my opinion. I feel like they should have used a more mate light blue or white coloring or with some sort of uh, translucent plastic that allowed light to actually shine through there. Other than that, you know, it's absolutely great. It's a very well done figure for this line, especially with all the silvers and the grays. Everything is how it should be. Now we come to my least favorite part of a Transformers figure, the transformation. Well, here we go. All right, here is Prime transformed. And I gotta say, the box doesn't really do it justice. Uh, you can see right here that it is basically an alien version of his classic tractor mode. 
of his classic truck mode. I do like how it moves around and everything, but again, the biggest problem I have with Hasbro and their new toy line is the fact that, well, the wheels here are sculpted. You need rubber wheels, dude. Otherwise, they're just not gonna move well on the floor. I know rubber's expensive for some reason, but hey, you know, it wouldn't hurt to actually get some that actually do move around. But hey, whatever, it's an alien robot, anything goes. I do like how reflective uh, the blue see-through plastic is right here. But again, I think they really should have used some sort of like clear blue because you can see all the cybernetic details right there, but it is kind of distracting. And it does give the impression that like the screens are broken or something. But overall, it's not a bad form of it. But it's not my favorite. Then again, I don't like to transform them that much. Well, there might be one I'll reconsider. Another thing I have to point out about this figure is this. You know that kibble and bit that you saw on the figure? Well, guess what? You can remove them without damaging it. And it looks good without it as well. Like, oh my god. Like, it looks amazing. Uh, although you can see some of the parts right here and you can see that, but like... Other than that, like, it really does help the figure. It looks like the classic animated 80s Prime because I'm a hipster nerd. And you know what? That's what I've always wanted from a basic toy line, especially a Voyager class. I gotta say, Hasbro and Takara, you really nailed it. Sad to say, but this Prime only comes with two accessories. One is his trusty blaster vest, so iconic with the character that it has to be put in with every single damn figure. And his energy axe, which is not an energy axe considering it's a battle master's weapon, which is a major disappointment to classic fans, but hey, here's hoping an upgrade kit actually adds one in. So overall, these accessories aren't really my favorite, but the gun and the blade do actually bring some life to the character, but I wish they put a lot more effort into them, especially for the hardcore fans that are used to the classic G1 things such as the energy sword. But hey, they did a good job though. So in conclusion, Optimus Prime has fantastic sculpt, fantastic posability, and fantastic paint applications, as well as good marks of kibble and bit removal. The only problem that is with this figure is the fact that it had paint markings on it and that the eyes were not perfectly colored, but other than that, it's perfect. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Please await more videos because this month I feel like I'm on a video making spree, as well as to remember this. <clears throat> Transform and roll out.